We have one for you that you probably ran into. AC's not blowing cold. Well, with some simple gauge readings and a touch test, we can fix that. It's all about the air condition system on today's Tech Garage. Welcome to Tech Garage presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Now there's nothing worse than uh, AC not working right, especially here in Florida. But no worries, we're gonna take you through the complete AC system today. You know, we're gonna learn about gauge readings, we're gonna understand everything, one of these components that are on this table here, and we're also gonna do some diagnostics and inspection. Now on our car, I got a gauge set hooked up here. Now you can go down to the auto parts store and you get one of these. They're relatively inexpensive. And this gauge reading is gonna tell you everything you wanna know. Along with that and a field test, we can tell what's going on. And just by looking at these gauges, I can tell the compressor's running, it's not cycling, and the gauges are at about ambient temperature. We're gonna need a compressor on this car. So in this show, we're gonna put a compressor on. But you know, while we put a compressor on, we're gonna to have to put the accumulator and the orifice tube in as well. But before we do any of that, it's imperative that we recover the refrigerant out of the system. John, if you wouldn't mind shutting it off, we're gonna show you exactly what you need to do to do this in your driveway. These are a fancy set of gauges. We've got some fancy tools, but truly we're gonna package this up and show you how you can do it. A lot of our viewers are restoring classics or hot rods or older cars, and you need to dive into the AC system. So investing in a quality set of gauges, as John's mentioned, has really good return on investment. You can use them on multiple vehicles for a lot of years. But step one is always to evacuate the refrigerant, in some cases the Freon, out of an older system. And that's where you're gonna need the help of a certified technician. What that technician's gonna do is use a tool very similar to this to evacuate and capture all of your old refrigerant safely and dispose of it so you don't have to worry about that or any kind of fines that you might experience after that. So step one, we're going to remove John's gauges here. There's a high pressure line as he mentioned and a low pressure line. We're going to connect up our tool, set these right out of the way, similarly to the high and low pressure. It snaps down on. This is what your technician is going to do on your system. Now tighten it, snap it down on, tighten it. Good, we're all sealed up. We'll come over to the machine. We simply hit recycle, which is the same as capture or evacuate all of the old refrigerant in this system. We tell it yes, and we're underway. Now this process will take 10 to 15 minutes depending on the vehicle. So while we wait for this to get evacuated, John's gonna tell us how the whole AC system really works. Now only at Tech Garage do we have a functioning AC system working on a board thanks to our friends at ATEC. But we have to understand the concept of air conditioning and we're gonna to have to rewind all the way back to the beginning. The job of the air conditioner is to take the heat out of the car and remove it. Thus, you're feeling a little bit colder. And there's an AC cycle we have to understand that makes that happen in all the components. And we'll start right here on the compressor. Now, the compressor's job is to compress. That's what it's doing. It's taking that refrigerant in the system. It's squeezing it. It's making it into a high pressure. And when it does that, it gets hot. So as it comes out, you can feel this line's hot. It's going to go run over to a condenser. Now, the condenser is located in the front of the car. What the condenser does, it changed actual states of the refrigerant. It left a gas, it went in there, and just like your mirror in the bathroom, it kind of rains down when it starts to cool, that's what's gonna happen here. We're gonna take that heat, we're gonna transfer it to the outside air, and it's gonna come out then a high pressure still, but it's gonna come out a liquid. And when it comes out a liquid, it goes over to the actual receiver dryer, which is just a desiccant bag that dries the refrigerant. We'll take a look at that a little bit later. And then it returns over to what's called a TXV, a thermostatic expansion valve. Now just think about, we had high pressure in that system up to this point. Now at this point, it's gonna go from a high pressure to a low pressure. Remember, it's a liquid too. So a high pressure liquid to a low pressure liquid. When that happens, the refrigerant becomes very cold and it's gonna go over an evaporator inside the car where your blower motor blows across it, grabs the heat, it's gonna transfer from that into the refrigerant and it's gonna take a ride from there all the way back out. When it does that, it goes through that actual evaporator, it changes states once again. We go in a liquid, we come out a gas. 
Then we come out a low pressure gas and we return back to the compressor and that process starts all over again. But that process has to work and I can actually demonstrate it right here with these gauges. And this will be a really good example of what's going on with our Mustang. Now our gauge is here, the system's off. And while the system's off, you can see here, I got what's called ambient temperature, ambient pressure. Refrigerant usually stabilizes around ambient temperature. This one's at about 80 low side. The low side of the system is where that compressor's pulling. The high side is where it's pushing. So you can see my high side right here is about 80. So they're equal. The system's equalized out. You may shut your car off and hear it hissing. Shh, it's equalizing out. That's what's going on from the high side to the low side. But remember, I'm going to fire this up. And when I fire it up, the compressor is going to pull. It's going to pull the refrigerant on the low side. So what we're going to see is we're going to see this gauge actually drop down. It should drop down to about 30 to 50 pounds around there somewhere. And then the high side is going to push. It's going to compress and it's going to raise the pressure. So what's going on there, the high side is going to raise up. So keep your eye on these gauges. When I fire this up, I'm going to turn the ignition on. I got an electric motor down here that's going to run the compressor. And you can see the low side's pulling which is the low side of the system. Brian hooked the blue gauge up to that earlier and the high side actually is starting to rise. It's going up because we're compressing. We're raising up on the high side. Now on our Mustang, what's going on is the gauge has really never moved, but yet the compressor was running. So on our Mustang, the compressor is not pulling and it's also not pushing. It's not compressing the refrigerant in the system. So with that happening, we know we have to replace the actual compressor on our Mustang over here. But we said before, before we do that, Brian's over there recovering the system. How's it coming, Brian? Okay, we've got all of the old refrigerant recovered out of the system so it's safe to go ahead and open it up. I'm gonna disconnect the RTI here. We'll need it again a little bit later, but we can go ahead and disconnect now. Both lines are clear. And we've got the air box removed for easier access. Now I'm gonna remove the serpentine belt and again, it's safe to go ahead and disconnect the low and high pressure lines from the back of the compressor so we can get this old compressor out of here and the new one in. We'll be back right after this. Here's a Tech Garage pop quiz. What is the state and pressure of the refrigerant as it leaves the compressor? A, low pressure gas, B, high pressure gas, C, low pressure liquid, or D, high pressure liquid? The correct answer is B. The compressor changes the refrigerant from a low pressure gas to a high pressure gas and the refrigerant heats up as it pressurizes. This edition of Tech Garage presented by Advance Auto Parts is being brought to you by AirTex. Exceptional quality, unmatched support. Stage 8, the world's best locking fastener. Steel rubber, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. And by Advance Auto Parts. Let's get you back to the garage. Welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by Advance Auto Parts. And I've got three of the four bolts out of our old compressor, and the fourth one ready to go. We've got the wiring harness disconnected down on the bottom. Be gentle, you don't want to be splicing any of those small wires on there. And we've got the high and low pressure lines also disconnected off the back of the compressor. Now I'm going to be gentle so I don't do any line damage to either of those as I remove this. Old compressor comes up out. Here you go, John. Perfect. Now a couple things you want to do prior to putting your other compressor in, just take a look at it. Make sure that you have a right configuration, the bolt pattern's right, and just as importantly, make sure your belt, your belt here, your serpentine grooves, the pulley looks good, everything looks great. Now be careful carrying this, it comes preloaded with a little bit of oil. We'll put it in, you should have that work done in a moment. You got it. Now on our compressor. Now our compressor here on that car was driven by the front, and I can tell by pushing this compressor, I'm not doing it with much effort. What's that telling me? Well, it takes a little effort to turn them over. So what's probably going on inside of there is this come apart. That's why it's so important that we replace the orifice tube along with the accumulator. When you buy a compressor, you have to do both because if that came apart, there's some debris around the system. And it is a good idea to go ahead and flush the system at the same time. Now the compressor itself, we talked about that earlier. And this is pretty cool because I got a cutaway. And if you look right here, there's an S 
and there's a D. Well, the S stands for suction. You remember where it was pulling in on that low side and the gauge was dropping? And the D is for discharge. That's that high pressure side. Well, how's it work? I'll turn it right here and I'll put a wrench on it and show you. There's pistons inside of there, just like a car. On the intake stroke, they're coming down. It's pulling the refrigerant in on the suction side. Then as the pistons go on the other side, it's actually pressurizing and it's pushing the refrigerant out. And that's a good look at the inside of the compressor. This is a wobble compressor. Brian, how you doing over there? Well, John, I have this new compressor just about mounted. Three of the four bolts are in. Now, I'm snugging these up. I'm not torquing them down just yet. But something to keep in mind, guys, is when you're mating aluminum to aluminum, get your torque wrench out. You need to make sure you follow all the right torque specs here to get everything to marry up, especially on these line fittings on the back of the compressor. Additionally, as I'm going along here, I keep checking to validate I haven't lost any O-rings out of the back of the compressor. I'm really taking care of those to make sure I don't lose them. As well, I haven't tipped the compressor back at all during the installation, so I've kept most of the oil intact, and that's really important as well. So the next step for us will be to remove the orifice tube. We'll do that after the break, and that's not terribly difficult to do either. But I put the compressor back in place here because, frankly, we have a lot of space with the air box removed where we can work. And I like to just verify and validate all the lines are going to reconnect properly. Now, another tip for you. With any compressor job, you want to make sure you understand the warranty requirements. So in this case, we have to have proof for the warranty to be intact on the compressor. We have to have proof that we've had this system flushed. Remember when we said get a certified technician to do it? Bring your paperwork. That's going to protect your warranty on your new compressor. We also have to replace the orifice tube and the accumulator dryer, and we'll do that next after the break on Tech Garage. Here's a Tech Garage pop quiz. What is the most common cause of a low, low side gauge reading with a low, high side reading? A, too much refrigerant, B, low on refrigerant, C, restriction on the high side, or D, restriction on the low side? Don't go away, we'll be right back with the answer. What is the most common cause of a low, low side gauge reading with a low, high side reading? A, too much refrigerant, B, low on refrigerant, C, restriction on the high side, or D, restriction on the low side? The correct answer is B, the most common cause of a low, low side gauge reading with a low, high side reading is a low refrigerant level. This will usually be accompanied with a compressor cycling rapidly. Welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Well, it's time to talk orifice tubes and accumulators. That's what's going to go on our Mustang. Now, we'll start out over here on the right. This orifice tube here, remember before we changed from a high pressure to a low pressure? Well, that's exactly what it did. It's a fixed orifice. That refrigerant come in one side, a high pressure, then it went out that low pressure, and it also cooled it really good so it can go into the evaporator, grab that heat, and take it out of the car. Now, if you see this one right here, not so much. Now, all that debris and stuff got in that system. Brian said about that warranty earlier, this is the key right here. If that debris gets flushed around that system, you're going to ruin your compressor in a heartbeat. Now, you may have a system like a TXV, thermostatic expansion valve. Same thing, high pressure to low pressure, going into the evaporator. The only difference is this one's fixed. This one actually meters. And we took one here in Tech Garage and ground it down so you can actually see inside there's a spring-loaded ball and then there's a sensing ball here that goes. Well, what the sensing ball does is it filled up with a little bit of a gas and it either expands and contracts according to the temperature of the evaporator and that allows us to open and close and regulate that refrigerant exactly into the evaporator. So if I need more coolant or less coolant, that one can control it. Now, a receiver dryer, on the other hand, he's fixing to put that in. You can have a receiver dryer or an accumulator. This is an accumulator dryer. Why? Because it's in the gas line going to the compressor. Receiver dryer, that's in the liquid line. Our Mustang has an accumulator dryer. Two things inside of this. We cut it open. You have a desiccant inside of there. Now, this desiccant dries 
the refrigerant because you don't want any moisture in there. That creates acid, eats up the lines, not a good thing. So we're gonna dry the refrigerant right there. And also it's called an accumulator. It's a little hole down here. Well, what's that all about? Well, we don't want any liquid refrigerant going to the compressor because liquid's not compressible and gases are. So if any liquid gets by with the orifice tube system, it's gonna drain out here, then boil and go back to the compressor of gas. Well, all we gotta do now is get these on the car. Brian, you need to take care of that. Well, John, we're one step closer. I've got the accumulator dryer just about out. Now, there's only one strap and one bolt that holds it in tight against the firewall. I've got that liberally loose because I, I can tell you we need the space down here to work. I also have a rag down here covering all O-rings and lines to make sure I don't get any debris in there as I pull this up and out. So I'm going to take my time, gently remove the old accumulator dryer. And you know John was talking about that fluid down in the bottom. Well, I can feel that there's some debris down in the bottom of this thing, so it's clearly in need of replacement. Now, we've taken the low pressure switch from the old one and reinstalled it on our new accumulator dryer as well. This will slide right back down into the same hole and we're gonna reconnect our lines. The thing I like about this particular accumulator dryer, new O-rings come with it. So I don't have to worry about transferring the old ones in. It only goes one way. Take your time here. You don't wanna do any damage on any of the lines or the O-rings. All right, push until you get a good click. And again, a really powerful tool in the process of these quick disconnect tools when you're removing those original lines. You gotta have them. Now, these only go back in one way. I'll reconnect the low pressure switch wiring harness. Same thing, you wanna hear a click here. There you go. And now, back to the pressure line. Let's check the O-rings one more time. We're in great shape here. Take your time, get a good fit, and listen for the click. All right, we're in. So let's move up to the orifice tube now. Up here at the top of the condenser that John talked about, the orifice tube falls right in line. Not only does it change from high pressure to low pressure, it's actually an inline filter as John described. So be gentle in pulling your old orifice tube out and be more gentle installing the new one. So we've got this guy out. You've got to clear a shoulder here. Take your time. We'll install the new one, we'll reconnect the line to the top of the condenser, and we're almost home. Stay with us on Tech Garage. We're gonna make this system really cool when we come back. Here's a Tech Garage pop quiz. Which two system components change AC pressures? A, orifice tube and compressor, B, condenser and evaporator, C, receiver dryer and accumulator, or D, accumulator and condenser? The correct answer is A. Compressor changes the refrigerant from low pressure to high pressure and the orifice tube changes it from high pressure to low pressure. This edition of Tech Garage presented by Advance Auto Parts is being brought to you by Dustless Blasting. It's the future of surface preparation. Magic Creeper, ready, rain or shine. Blaster, work it like a pro. And by Advance Auto Parts, let's get you back to the garage. Welcome back to Tech Garage. Now Brian's got us in great shape. We're ready for the moment of truth. But we went ahead and hooked up the machine, evacuate the system. What that did, it got all the moisture out, made sure we got no corrosion in there and pulled a vacuum on it, saw that we had no leaks, we're ready to crank it up. But what we're gonna look for, right before we crank it up, remember our gauges here, 70 and about 70, 70 degrees in here. We know we got enough Freon in there like before, but when we ran it before, they didn't move. So this time what we're looking for is the high side to go up and the low side to go down. It's pulling and pushing. Give it a shot, Brian. Now it's gonna sense the pressure, the compressor should kick on. Once that compressor kicks on, we should be in good shape here. And there goes the compressor. High side's climbing, low side's dropping. I can tell by looking at these gauges, it's gotta feel pretty cool in there, eh Brian? Yeah, it's great. I got a duct temperature here, John, right between 40 and 45, right where we wanna be in the blue. So we definitely are circulating the proper refrigerant and it feels great in the cabin. Boy, this one's in good shape. You know, all that's left is the email question of the week. 
John Kyle from Omaha emailed us. He's got an AC system that blows cold air while the vehicle's moving, but if he's sitting still or in traffic or anything, it's just not functioning. You got any ideas? No, I know those gauge readings will tell us, but if I had to make a guess, I'm thinking it probably has something to do with the airflow going through the condenser. Kyle, you remember on that demonstrator we showed you in the front of the vehicle is the condenser? Well, that condenser changes that refrigerant from a gas to a liquid. If that's not getting done, that AC is not going to work proper. And what you have on the front of your car, I don't know what kind of car you have, but you could have a mechanical fan or you can have an electrical fan. If you have a mechanical fan, what I have here is a viscous clutch on the front, and that kind of drags along and goes. Kyle, you can just reach down there. If the engine's not running, be safe and spin it. If it spins really, really free, it's probably not engaging, gonna cause your car to blow hot air. Now, the other one here is electric fan. Now, my electric fans, these are electric motors right here. They're usually driven by the computer. When you turn on your air condition, it's gonna turn on this fan, and when it turns on this fan, it's gonna pull air across your condenser along with your radiator. You probably would notice your air conditioning going bad before you'd actually see the car heating up. I would check those two things, but you know those gauge readings will tell the tale. This is the ultimate truth teller right here. Kyle, especially for your needs, we, I think we've shown that an air conditioning service and maintenance can get pricey. There's a lot of mystery around that whole thing. Hopefully we helped you understand that today, but a small investment in a good set of gauges goes a long, long way. If you had a set of gauges, I would suspect they're both going high as soon as that AC starts blowing warm. Now remember, if you're replacing the compressor and you've identified that as the problem, many times, almost all the time, you're going to be required to replace the orifice tube and the accumulator dryer as part of the project. Remember this little guy? They can be hard to get out and even more difficult to get the new one in. Be gentle here and treat it like surgery. Now you may have an orifice tube. If you have an orifice tube, you probably have an accumulator dryer or remember the TXV system thermostatic expansion system. You may have a receiver dryer, but you're still gonna have to replace them both. And at the end of the day, you gotta have a properly functioning belt. It's a big deal. You gotta turn that pulley exactly how it's designed to, and a new belt, serpentine belt, ensures that. Well, I suspect with those tips, Kyle, you'll fix your car with no problem. Don't forget to know more about Tech Garage. Follow us on Twitter. And that's all we have for today. So from our garage to your garage, thanks for watching Tech Garage. Production assistance for Tech Garage is provided by Chipola College, located in Mariana, Florida. Founded in 1947, Chipola College is a member institution of the Florida College System, with a current enrollment of over 2,000 students. Chipola offers bachelor's and associate degree programs, as well as college credit and workforce development certificates. Chipola was recently ranked as one of the top three community colleges in the United States.